Hi, I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. My partner, Kristen Oaks-White, will be back next week. You don't need me to tell you it's hot outside right now, and nobody knows that better than sugarcane farmers, as they and their farm workers are busy planting this time of year. Twyla's Neil Malonso shows us how they're getting it done and making sure they stay cool. It's a family enterprise here at Homeless Point along the river near Donaldsonville. Frankie Sotil Jr. and Sr. are surveying the land as planting is going in hot and heavy this year with an emphasis on hot. Planting's going uh, pretty good this year, uh, extremely good weather. We started uh, last Friday and we continued on till today, which is on a Monday. And when you can get a start like that in the beginning, nonstop, you can accomplish a lot. We're trying to plant about 1,100 acres of sugar cane this year. Sotil uses mechanical planting here on the farm, using about five of these planters across that acreage. He says it's important to help keep the cane consistent. Naturally, when you plant sugar cane, you want dry weather. If you can plant it when it's dry and do everything the right way, you're going to get a good stand of cane. A good stand of cane means it's going to be good for the next four years. So it's very critical to do the best job you could at planting time. Even with mechanical planting, the Sotils employ about 23 workers here on the farm. They also employ a cooling station to keep their workers hydrated through the morning and they break during the hottest hours of the day. We come to work earlier now. We take a break middle of the day when it's extremely high temperatures. And then we come back in the afternoon when the temperatures are lower to finish our day out. It's not as convenient, but it's something we feel we have to do. Precautions like that are key to a safe planting season, according to Farm Bureau Labor Advisory Chair Katie Nunez. I think we just need to keep reminding everybody to take lots of breaks and, and to make sure that they're doing what they need to do. If they feel sick at all or starting to feel bad, they need to let somebody know. Nunez says there are some tight deadlines associated with heat-related illnesses farmers need to be aware of. If there's an accident in the field, um, heat related or otherwise, if there's a loss of limb or a loss of an eye or a inpatient hospital, like a hospitalization, that farmers need to be reminded that they have to report that to OSHA within 24 hours. If there's unfortunately a death in the field, it has to be reported within eight hours. Meanwhile, sons Alex and Frankie Sotil III have joined the planting at the family farm. He went to college for business, but now sees the farm lifestyle as his true vocation. Last year we had a, a good planting as well. Um, you know, we want dry conditions, but once the cane does get in the ground, we need some, some rain to keep it moving. So the dry conditions are working for us now, but you know, as soon as everything gets in the ground, you know, we're going to need some, some rain. Now, even though, as you can see, sugarcane is mechanically planted here, it's still hot and dusty work, but the farmers here take every precaution they can to keep themselves and their workers safe. Reporting from Donaldsonville, I'm Neil Malasson. As you saw with the hot and dry weather, planting is going smoothly for most of Louisiana and they're on track to finish before September. Speaking of planting, Louisiana farmers plant sugarcane on more than 530,000 acres of land in the state. That's according to the LSU Ag Center. About a third of those acres are being planted right now. Farmers get three years of harvest off of each planting of sugarcane. In Vermilion Parish, Kyle Zenon uses whole stalk cutters to gather his plant cane and uses mechanical planters to put it in the ground. A lot of sugarcane is planted by hand. Zenon says this year's planting is very different from last year when his fields saw stunted cane because of the drought. He says this year is much better. In certain areas, uh, we just had some, some uh, storm events that knocked cane down in a few areas, but majority of what I'm cutting is straight, tall, is healthy. Uh, it's going good. You know, if we can just tone down the, the rain just a for a few weeks, you know, to get our planning in, you know, before we have some kind of major storm. Thank, hopefully we don't have nothing like that. But um, as far as this year, it's going excellent. Sugarcane harvest is expected to begin around mid-September. Plans to develop a major grain terminal in St. John the Baptist Parish have been scrapped, along with a nearly billion-dollar investment in the community. Greenfield, Louisiana, a company specializing in ag infrastructure, faced numerous delays over the years due to legal filings and community protests. The last straw was the Army Corps of Engineers delaying the elevator's permit another six months, causing Greenfield to pull the plug. Louisiana Commissioner of Agriculture and Forestry Dr. Mike Strain says he hopes Greenfield will reconsider as the investment in agriculture would be significant. But he acknowledges there are few places a grain elevator like this could go. And it's got to be, you know, below Louis Dreyfus. I mean, I mean, if you look at where the land is, 
from there, you know, basically within the realm of the port of Louisiana, South Louisiana, or you get into the ports of Orleans and Jefferson. But you've got to have access to water for the barges, water for the ships, rail, and road. And so if you put it too far, you've got to haul that grain too far. So there's only certain regions where it will work. Numerous Louisiana media outlets reported that Governor Jeff Landry blasted the Army Corps of Engineers, saying that they, quote, chose to adhere to special interest groups and wealthy plantation owners. Farm tours are pretty common in the world of Farm Bureau. Farmers use these opportunities to tell their stories directly to people who may have never set foot on a farm. This week, Twyla's Carl Wiggers joined a group that traveled from the Beltway to the grain bins to learn more about Louisiana agriculture. Beauregard Parish grain farmer David Smith would typically be on a combine finishing up his corn harvest. But today, he's hosting some of his newest friends from the staff of U.S. Congressman Mike Johnson. It means a lot for to have the staffers out here because they can hear my concerns. You know, what I'm seeing in, in the field every day and then what the uh, markets are doing, what the weather's doing. Mainly, let's get us a farm bill and you know, let them know that, hey, we need something passed pretty soon. I think it's what, 2012, the, the last farm bill came around that time. But we're dealing with 2024 inputs for our fertilizer, our seed, the transportation costs. But we're, we're dealing with 1980 prices, what we're getting for our, our crops. Smith says he's grateful these staffers took time to come visit his farm and learn more about his farm and his family's story. To have staffers out here and to hear what I need to say and talk about agriculture, it means a lot. You gotta realize these staffers see all kind of people every single day in D.C. telling some sad story or have some need and expect these young people to meet their need. But not many people who do that also invite those people back home to wherever that need resides. Andy Brown is the Commodity and Public Policy Director at Louisiana Farm Bureau. He works with congressional staff on behalf of the farmers and ranchers in Louisiana. He says getting a group like this from Washington, D.C. and local offices is where lasting relationships are formed. The group also traveled to Evangeline Parish to learn about rice at the farm of Louisiana Farm Bureau President Richard Fontenot. Fontenot and Smith are examples of Louisiana Farm Bureau's influence connecting the lawmakers in D.C. to the farmer in the field. Farm Bureau is grassroots and it's the tip of the spear of going in legislatively to get things done. They're slicing through, getting everything out the way. Here's what we need to do. Here's what we'd like to see done, and we want to work with you to get it done with our legislators. Farm Bureau, to me, is a point of the spear. We know that that's what sets us apart. That's what gives our logo that brand recognition and gives value to the folks that we try to influence is, is that relationship from our volunteer leader and the time that they give. This is so much value for me personally. I feel like I'm being heard. Reporting from Southwest Louisiana, I'm Carl Wiggers for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture. David Smith has served as a member of the Louisiana Farm Bureau Board of Directors in the past and is the current Beauregard Parish Farm Bureau president. With Congress still debating a farm bill, Louisiana Farm Bureau will continue to connect farmers and ranchers with members of Congress. Louisiana Farm Bureau Commodity and Public Policy Director Andy Brown says the narrative is shifting on this topic. We're too late to just simply ask for please pass a farm bill uh, because that hasn't been done. Things are really tough uh, looking at the market and looking towards harvest uh, and looking towards trying to get a loan for 2025. So we want our members to know uh, that narrative is shifting in D.C. and, and with Farm Bureau across uh, the country that we need a farm bill. We needed it done yesterday, but because you didn't get it done, Congress, we need something to help us get to the next farm bill. There are more than half a million head of beef cattle in Louisiana, according to the latest LSU Ag Center Ag Summary. However, there are also fewer beef cattle ranchers than just two years ago. That's why events like this one, organized by the Louisiana Farm Bureau Livestock Advisory Committee, the Louisiana Grazing Lands Conservation Initiative, and the LSU Ag Center are so important. The Livestock Economics Workshop held in Alexandria served as continuing education for ranchers who sell calves to market. Topics covered included economic of grazing and pasture management, budgeting and record keeping options, and marketing options. East Feliciana rancher Amelia Kent says events like this are invaluable. We're out in our fields every day and we're hopefully studying the markets pretty regularly and conversing with our marketing representatives. 
Um, but opportunities like this keep us well informed, especially of current affairs and hot topics, but really um, give us that background to continue our knowledge. To learn more about the Louisiana Grazing Lands Conservation Initiative or future events, visit our website at twilatv.org. Still to come on Twila, we'll check back in with Commissioner Strain for another certified Louisiana specialty. But first, we're following these 4-H teams to New Orleans to see who's got what it takes to win the title in the Great American Seafood Cook-Off. You're watching This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. New Orleans, the unofficial food capital of the U.S., I would argue the world, recently hosted the Great American Seafood Cook-Off. 4-H members from across the Southeast competed with their best dishes. Craig Gotro got a taste of the excitement. Fresh seafood was the featured ingredient for six 4-H teams from across the South at this year's Great American Seafood Cook-Off in New Orleans. And while Gulf seafood was the focal point of their recipes, each of the teams put their own hometown twists on their signature dishes. If there's something specific to their parish, county, state that they want to incorporate in their dishes, then that's just phenomenal because we do want them to bring a piece of home with them. Cooking in front of a crowd, being judged by professional chefs, and facing a one-hour time limit put pressure on these young chefs, but some develop strategies to deal with it. We made sure our dish could be finished in 30 minutes no matter what. If it's hard to finish, it takes 30 minutes to cook our dish. With that hour, you have leeway so you don't have to rush. Cooking with seafood requires skill, and understanding what each ingredient brings to the dish is essential to success. A perfect seafood dish is about balance, and getting that balance can be a little bit difficult, and you have to truly understand every single ingredient in the dish. Another factor shaping the competitors' dishes was that their entries were not only judged on taste, but on how healthy they were. We wanted something that was easy to make, uh, rich in protein and low in calories. Uh, we also wanted something that was local, so like the sweet potatoes are grown in our parish and the shrimp are also local. For the second consecutive year, the Star County, Texas team took home the top prize with Louisiana's Ascension Parish team placing second. From the Great American Seafood Cook-Off, this is Craig Gocho reporting from New Orleans for the LSU Ag Center. The five states represented were Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Texas. You've heard us mention Louisiana Farm Bureau's new leadership a few times since the 102nd Annual Convention, but have you ever wondered how these men and women found their way into those seats? We answer that question and more in our brand new series, Road to Leadership. This week, meet the new president of Louisiana Farm Bureau, Richard Fontenot. I am Richard Fontenot, the Louisiana Farm Bureau President, and I farm in the Ville Platte area with my family on a fourth generation farm with my brother Neil, and we grow rice, soybeans, and crawfish. My father was president in 78 and 79 in Evangeline Parish, and my mother was on the Women's Committee, and I would attend convention as a youth, and, uh, and, and be one of those pesky kids running around, if you will, and just having a ball, but I started Farm Bureau exposure at that point. And then later on after college, I got reintroduced to the Young Farm and Ranchers program back in the 90s. So the Young Farm and Ranchers program was the baseline of where we started. Ron and I as a couple in Farm Bureau and, and I, we've embraced that. From there, I had the opportunity to serve on American Farm Bureau, wife and R. Had the opportunity to go into the Partners in Ag Leadership program. Then after that, and during that process, I was recruited within the, the rice commodity. Became an advisory chair at the end of the day on that, and then opportunity to serve on the state board. In 2015, one of my great mentors, Ms. Linda Zombreker, stepped down from third vice president's seat and opened a vacancy. Family decision was to pursue that, and we did that in 2015, and we stayed in leadership, and nine years later, a vacancy arose again as president and leadership of our organization, and we were successful in getting elected in that position. I often get asked, where do you find the time and how do you make the time to contribute and spend all the time you do within the organization? And I said, it's, if it's that important to you as part of your operation, part of your future, part of your succession is, is to protect agriculture, you make time. There is sacrifice to do that, 
but I think there's value at the end of the day. Each parish throughout our state has a parish board and, and they operate individually and they are the grassroots of Louisiana Farm Bureau. And if you belong to a particular parish, reach out to their parish secretary or their parish president and engage in the fact that you are interested in serving in an opportunity. It might be commodity specific, it might be general, young farmers and ranchers, women's leadership. We have a lot of different programs. We need volunteers and support. So I encourage you to reach out, share your interests, and I guarantee you, we do have a place for you in Louisiana Farm Bureau. Still to come on Twyla, we all know that milk makes your bones stronger, but how well do some of the strongest guys in the country really know their milk? Hey, how's it going, Carl? Doing right? My husband's name is Richard Champagne, and he is very quirky. He likes to make all these crazy commercials. I don't know why my kids showed him about Instagram or Facebook. The thing that kind of scares me about him is every morning he wakes up and he wants to tell me 15 ideas he thought about in his sleep. And I just say, no, not until I've had at least one or two cups of coffee, Richard. <laughs> We are here in Leonville in St. Landry Parish. We are at Champagne's Marche, Richard and Angela Champagne. And this family has been in business here since 1926. We're in Leonville, Louisiana, Champagne's Marche. My grandfather started back in 1926. Uh, we're in the third generation uh, of Champagne's uh, in Leonville. You know, this is a grocery store, but they also have fresh meats. They got plate lunches, and they specialize in their flavor, in their seasonings, in their taste. This is Cajun at its best. Hey, good to see you, Richard. Champagne. Good to see you. How are you? Champagne, nice. Hey, good to see you. Thank you. It smells so wonderful in here, right? <laughs> yeah. Outside, I said, I know we're in the right place. I can smell it. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Cajun, you have, it can't just have a Cajun name. In other words, it has to be really Cajun. And the only way to be authentic is through the Louisiana Certified Program. And so we're glad to be part of that. Well, that smells good, huh? We have a new brand that we're bringing out, Cajunality. And uh, we have uh, several seasonings. The first one is Special Blend. And uh, we say if you want a little Cajun uh, in your personality, try the Cajunality. Oh, we got some oh, fresh boudin uh, to do. try. Wow. Uh, we have the original and the swamp with the uh, crab ball. We make 12 different kinds of boudin. Now you and said with the crab ball, what do you call it, swamp? Swamp. Swamp, okay. okay. <laughs> Fitting, right? <laughs> I understand. Another one of his ideas. I understand, yeah. And this is seasoned with our uh, Cajunality Special uh, Blend, which is uh, certified Cajun. Wow, that looks beautiful. We have probably over 150 recipes, different items that we do. Smoked sausage, uh, boudin. We have uh, 11 different kinds of boudin. And then uh, naturally king cakes. Uh, people love king cakes, especially around this time. When you taste the product here from Champagne's Marche, you're tasting part of the culture. A lot of these recipes right. have been handed down for generations. Years ago, my mother-in-law went to King Cake Seminar. We did not even have a bakery. Uh, our bakery now was a, was a warehouse. And she went to Seminar and did two. Uh, put the king cakes out, they sold. The next day she did eight. Uh, put the king cakes out, they sold. And before you knew it, neither one of us had a bakery here, but uh, the first year we did 1,500 king cakes out of our homes. And then the following year, I told my husband, if you want another king cake from me or from your mom, we need a bakery. And so uh, in 1997, we, have, we established our bakery and uh, we've been doing king cakes ever since. Okay, so okay. we proof the king cake, we bake the king cake, and once it cools, we fill it, then we ice it. Look at you, you're natural. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I might have a job, right? There you go. And then put a little baby on one of those uh, the, where the icing is wet. Ta-da. Ta-da. There you go. Good thing you're not paying me by the hour, isn't it? <laughs> Richard and Angela are so much fun, they're really wonderful people, and you can tell their heart and their soul is in this store. Money can't buy what we have here. When people go to the grocery store, they can see that certified label. It's about our culture, it's about our heritage, and we celebrate our food. If you can't find us, then you follow your nose during king cake season because it will get you here to Champagne's Marche. By fresh, local, and certified Louisiana. We are a certified Cajun family. We would love for you to come see us and experience all the great quality Cajun things we have over here. Certified Louisiana's Crawfish Tales with Commissioner Mike Strain was brought to you by the Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry Certified Louisiana Program. 
for information about the Certified Louisiana, Certified Cajun, Certified Creole, Certified Craft Beverage, and the Certified Farm to Table Logo Program, visit CertifiedLouisiana.org or LDAF.LA.gov. Support Louisiana families. Look for Certified Louisiana logos at your favorite grocery, restaurant, or farmer's market. Buy Louisiana. It's the way to grow. Time now for this week's Twyla Boost, and we are now entering most people's favorite season. I'm talking about football season, so we thought we'd combine two of our favorite things. Yes, the Buffalo Bills know a good deal about making it to the Super Bowl, but how much do they know about their dairy products? Please don't tell me there's orange juice in here. What's up, guys? I'm trying milk. 1%. Whole? Oh. I don't know, but this is warm. They sell 1%? Five. Five? What's the percentage? Just zero. You guys ever drank a glass of milk in his life? <laughs> <laughs> That's whole. No? Is that milk? They're all milk. What kind of milk? <laughs> <I'm okay. laughs> that texture is crazy. Ooh, is that like half and half? That one tastes like butter. Is it butter? <laughs> oh, heavy cream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not condensed milk. It's not whipped cream. Nope. It's not cream cheese. <laughs> Dude, I have no idea. That's some thick milk. A melted milkshake or something. I don't know. Uh, oh, that's like heavy, heavy whipping cream. Oh. That's good. That's 2%. Is that whole milk? No. No. Oh, these two taste like regular milk to me. The skim? This is skim. That's my childhood right there. <laughs> that water. Sh that's a skim. Yeah. That's yeah. a skim. <laughs> Ugh, that's half and half. That's half and half. I kind of like half and half, I'm not gonna lie. Half and half? Yeah! Oh, this is whole milk. Dairy creamer? Oh, creamer. Think fractions? A half? And? Not a half? No. <laughs> oh, half and half. I'm lactose. It's 2% or whole. I think it's 2%. This is dairy milk. Cow's milk, 2%. Man, uh, maybe like a... a Sweet, sweet pecan or something like that. What? what? Like a sweet what? pecan. Mm. 2%. 2%? I say like skim milk. No. Ooh, chocolate milk. Oh. So, what is it, almond milk? Yeah. Chocolate milk. No, almond milk. Hey. I'm gonna say like almond milk. That was sweet. That's almond milk? Yes. Yeah. Almond. Yep. Ooh. Almond. Almond milk? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Is that sweetener? Oh, ew. You guys are having me drink synthetic shit. The almond milk, is yeah. it? Yeah? That's yeah. almond milk? The Bills got milk, and they got four LSU Tigers on the team this year. That does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we'll check in on the rice harvest in the northeast part of the state. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twylatv.org. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, which is now X and Instagram. You can also find all of these stories and more on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe, turn on those notifications. That way you know when we put something new out there. For all of us here at Twyla, thank you for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.